Yeah, I, here's the thing. Jessica, I felt like needed to make it a dog fight, and she didn't. She's not more technical oh. than Cynthia Cavill on the ground or nope. on the feet. And there nope. was not a chance for her to win that fight if if she tried to stand on the outside and counter or try and like just stand, period. There was never a mix up. She never tried to get a takedown. She never tried to like make it a dirty dog fight. She has, I feel like with the conditioning that she has, she's got great conditioning. She looked fresh yep. going in the fifth. She should have been pushing the pace a lot harder, like in the grill, dirty boxing, Randy Couture style. Like you train at Rand or she used to. I don't know if she doesn't still. No, she does. Yeah, she's, she's still. Training, there. She's training. Why are you not following that strategy of Couture's? Like get in there, press him to the fence. Let's get after that dirty boxing. Let me clinch your head and just give you the business. Sing, <laughs> single collar tie, uppercut, sneeze the box. Anything. Yeah. I just don't get it. I didn't get it. I'm not saying you Break need to force. Down. You don't need to force the takedown, but you at least need to like make an effort. Like the game plan wasn't working after the third. And you could tell, like you said, the first round was one and one. But then once you lost the third, you're like, look, if I lose one more round, I got to make some changes. Like I, I've lost two in a row now. And your corner should be telling you you're down two rounds. Like it's it's two to one. Okay, I have you winning the first. You know, at least telling her like I thought we won the first. It could be close, but I still had you winning the first. You got to be honest with your corner. Or your corner's gonna be honest with you, I should say. And going into that third round, I said you need to make some changes. We need to make this a, either a gritty fight, or you need to like start pressing the fence and make it a gritty fight, or you need to start mixing it up. Punch, punch, take down, come back up, more striking, more kicking back to the takedown something you don't have to get the takedown but you at least got to threaten it to make something could be, able, be worried about it and she never did that never it was like let me just stand there wait for you to throw i'm gonna throw something back let me wait for you it just it never it never worked out you were she was always a step behind um i felt like she was punching with t-rex arms and i'm not that's not a dig yes. it just was like very uh, uh, no, no. Uh, uh. Yeah. it wasn't like ah, she, ah like turning the she hips was and, pushing Yes. She's pushing her, her, especially pushing with her right hand. It's like, it's not coming out in yeah. a fluid motion. It's, there's a push to it and yeah. it looks, it looks like it's, it's hampered. It's struggling. I don't know what to say with it, but it just doesn't look natural. Like a fighter's punches no. do. She looks like she's, you know, it almost looks like she's labored, mm -hmm. meaning she's tired and you can tell she's not tired. And I would have thought after the Shevchenko fight that they would have fixed the problem with her blocking head kicks. And it was Ooh. not fixed. In the first no. three rounds, she got kicked in the head two or three times. And she got lucky, I think, on the third one. She finally caught it. But And then after that, Cynthia Cavillo stopped throwing them, luckily. Otherwise, I think the fight would have ended a lot sooner. Because Cynthia Cavillo stopped throwing them once she got that foot caught. And then Jessica didn't follow up to try to get the takedown. After that, Cavillo didn't throw it anymore. She should have kept going back to the well on that because That's it was way, open I, all day long. I think Cavillo, once Cavillo hit the ground with Jessica, yeah, she said, oh, I, I, I'm good. I know where I'm bringing this fight mm -hmm. back. True. And that was all she was thinking about at that point. Yeah, we talked about this, what, last week, right? When, when somebody feels like they have an advantage and they feel very comfortable, let's just get through the fight, no injuries. And, yep. and some of these fighters got the fight, you know, a week or two later because they had no injuries. And, you know, I can make two paychecks in three weeks. Hell yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me <laughs> up. So I, th I think that was probably something like, like you just suggested. Like she got the, she was able to get takedowns pretty easily. She was able to control top position pretty easily. And when she wasn't able to control the top position, she's like, I'm kind of winning the fight on the feet. And I'm dominating, you know, this whole fight all the way around. There's no rush or anything for me to do, for me to do anything. It was a it was a card that was kind of getting criticized a little bit coming in. I know you don't really listen to the critics much, but it ended up being a great night. I'm just curious. It always you, does. I was gonna say, do you take personal pleasure when it's like you maybe you hear people shitting on a card and it, it ends up being a, a night like that? It's just you know, listen, 20 years. How many how many bad cards have we had in 20 years? I can count on one hand. Listen, not every fight is for everybody. Watch, don't watch this one. Watch the next one. Don't watch the next three. Watch the one after the Believe Me. We got nothing but fights going on all this summer. So if you don't like it, don't watch it. But, you know, everybody's got to jump in there and give their two cents and chime, chime in. This card sucks. No cards suck. And if you're a fight fan, you watch all the fights. People quickly forget 
of you know what I've done. You know, I've took out three of the greats back to back, beat them at their own games. Uh, you know what I mean? It's a it's it's not an easy task, but people quickly forget that. You know, you, whether it's a biased uh, opinions or whatever it is, a biased commentary. Uh, people quickly forget about it and you know people think he can uh, take me out so right now this is a fight that I want even though uh, I started thinking is the rematch what needs to happen uh, I, I told myself you know what I want this I think this is the biggest fight for me I've got something to prove you know I really do have something to prove uh, I'm a little upset I feel a little disrespected uh, how, thing, how things have been uh, but you know that's that just makes me it's motivation it really is I'm motivated right now I've got something to prove you know what I mean? This is a. I'm putting him away. That's a. That's that's what I'm going to do. You know, I've beat him five rounds to nil last fight. I know I can outsmart him. I know I can out volume. You know, but you know, a lot of people think he can't be finished. That's my goal now. I'm going to go set a, set a real statement. Take out Max Holloway. Finish him inside the five, and let everyone know. No doubts. I won't have Max Holloway. You know, thinking he won the fight or, or whatever it is, a biased opinions. I'm not going to give anyone the chance to have any of that. I'm just going to take it, take him out in the in the five rounds, and and that's it. No doubt in anyone's mind, I'll be the greatest featherweight uh, there is today, and uh, won't be long after that. After a few defenses, I'll be the greatest featherweight of all time. It, it's nothing against you that people, I guess, doubt that Max Holloway will be finished because in 26 pro fights, we've only seen him finished once. It was a, a sub submission. He's been in the octagon for more than five hours and never been knocked down, let alone knocked out. Why are you the one guy to do it? But that's that's my goal now. Again, like, you know, that's a you again. Last fight, I was like, I had a job to do. I had a game plan. I stuck to it. Uh, right now, I've got something to prove. This is this is my goal. You know, I beat Chad Mendes. Uh, you know, went over, uh, you know, t to America in Vegas, fought him, uh, fought him in his backyard. Uh, a lot of people asking me, you know, what are you going to do about the wrestling? What are you going to do? You know, you've never re wrestled a guy like that. You never had a, a, you know, a high class wrestler like that. I'm going to show you that he tries to wrestle me. That's, you know, as soon as we get back, I'm getting up straight away. I'm going to be in his face. Every time he takes me down, he's going to regret taking me down and I'm going to punish him. And that's what I did. Aldo, what are you going to do about his leg kicks? What are you going to do about his stand up? I'm going to beat him at his own game. I out leg kicked him, you know what I mean? I, 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 in his backyard, you know, I went over there and uh, just dominated him in ways that people thought I wouldn't be able to do. And uh, Max, again, the same thing. What are you going to do? You know, his volume striker, uh, you know, these, like, you know, it was, a, it was like a goal of mine to be like, oh, I'm going to beat them at their own game. And uh, now my goal is put a Max away. Again, nothing but respect to the dude, you know, I'm not hating on him. Uh, There's just a new fuel, you know, I've got this fire and uh, motivation and, and you know, I've got to put him away. I think this is what needs to, needs to happen for me. Uh, I, I really want to prove myself, and I know a lot of people think he can't be finished, and I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm always going through your head. We talked a little bit about this, but I find it really fascinating how calm you are, like pre-fight. Like, I'm sure people would, if you like, walk people through that three hours before the fight, you know, that experience for you three hours before the fight okay. three hours so that was pi to i was probably heading to the pi right right i had in the pi i'm trying to think are you thinking about the fight are you just we breathing? talked about last fight i mean last pod remember yeah we did but i'm trying to th really think what i mean i was definitely con consistently reminding myself of trying to follow my breath as much as possible but then i would have thought about I knew I was gonna come out in the fight and I was gonna throw a stomp and then I knew I was gonna let whatever just kinda of take over. I didn't have any, I need to do this or this or that. Just kinda of just kept trying to nasal breathe and follow my breath, but. I don't Cause really truly is, I it thoughts. truly is for most people, dude, that three hours, four hours day of the fight is hard on people. Yeah. Cause they're so scared of what's gonna happen. And they're playing through all these, thousands of different scenarios that could happen in a fight you have no idea you could go out there throw the first punch boom and your hand shatters yeah. or throw a kick and I, your foot yeah, breaks i consciously know that it's easy to start building up stories and i yeah. completely just cut them off right at the beginning i don't even let them yeah. get oh shit what if this i and completely that's just cut it off huge skill in itself yeah and i think that's a skill i learned from obviously fighting a lot but doing the meditations and stuff knowing okay if i'm just going to stop the story here none of the anxiety is going to follow mm -hmm. so i'm usually 
fight day I, I feel really fucking calm the whole fight week's pretty fuck i mean mo- most of that fight day is just a calm day i don't really have coffee mm-hmm. I, I i i don't think i had coffee at all until i had a little just like drink before before the fight but don't yeah don't do coffee don't really do much just chill we but we work out in the morning that's always feels sweat. fucking good get, get all get everything moving. yeah get the food moving the blood flowing then take a nap but yeah it's a pretty calm fucking day but it's weird it's like mm. my body knows it's fight day mm. from the day that we got the fight booked they know it, it knows like oh shit today's that fucking day mm-hmm. and it was nice not having any injuries I felt healthy as fuck going in there. Mm-hmm. In the back, I felt healthy. My hips felt loose. My arms felt good. Has there ever been a fight to where it's like, okay, you're playing a lot of those games in your head, and you're like, God damn it. I remember before Terry on, for a, for a little bit, like a minute I'd pry, I'd say, when uh, you, I had no one in the back with me because you had to go corner Lauren. Mm-hmm. You and Crouch were my corners, and you guys we had a girl fighting before me so i was sitting in the back and i remember i closed my eyes and laying under the table and then i remember thinking like god if i lose this one and i lose one more i get cut thinking that mm-hmm. and then but i remember thinking that vividly and like closed my eyes and i was like it scared I was like oh fuck Ooh. that <laughs> so i remember i just moved around shadow box a little bit but since then the andre fight the jose fight that fight doesn't even none of those even pop up really 